In any kind of chemical reaction, there are sometimes factors, things that aren't involved in the chemical reaction, that become important parts of the reaction having success. When we're talking about things from a kinetic standpoint, one of the things that we typically cover is the role of a catalyst in a chemical reaction. There's a really dramatic and spectacular example of catalysis that you can do that involves the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. In this case, we're going to be using iron-3 ions to cause the decomposition of the hydrogen peroxide. Now, for this demonstration, I will be using 30% hydrogen peroxide, so it's very important that if you're using a peroxide concentration this high that you protect your hands. Uh, you can notice if you ever split on your hand, it does turn it to sort of a very, very bright white color, almost looks frostbitten, uh, and what's happening is you literally just oxidized your skin at that point. Um, so do make sure that you protect yourself and protect, put gloves on. Now, in the decomposition reaction, Catalysts can sometimes cause things called reaction intermediates when they're going through the process of whatever reaction that they're catalyzing. And one nice thing about this is it's a really dramatic and easy way to show a reaction intermediate as part of the mechanism. So I'm going to pour some 30% hydrogen peroxide into my test tube. You can measure it out to 20 milliliters. I tend to just eyeball it and make sure that I'm using enough to get the reaction that I want to. Uh, you'll also definitely want a large chemical splash tray for doing this demonstration. Uh, you can purchase them from Flynn. In my school, we have a photography lab, and the photography teacher periodically has to get rid of the, the dishes that they use for developing the portraits and the prints after they've uh, illuminated the light on them. She gave me her old splash trays, and they're chemically inert substances, so I have lots of splash trays that I can use in my classroom. So talk to your photo teacher if you have one in your building and get them to just give you the old trays whenever they get rid of them. It's another way to increase your supply of chemical splash trays. Um, you'll also notice that I have the test tube vertical here. This is the way we always tell our students never to heat anything. But for this reaction, because it's going to generate a lot of gas and will eventually explode upward, um, I want it to go straight up and come straight down. I, in this case, I don't want it to be angled. This is not a lesson in projectile motion. We want things to go straight up and down, not across the entire countertop. So I'm going to add a catalyst. Um, the catalyst I'm going to add to this is iron-3 chloride. This is a 0.1 molar solution. Uh, iron-3 chloride does give you a nice yellow color. I do show my students the color before I start the demonstration. And then they can see a very clear color change as soon as this contacts the hydrogen peroxide solution. So if I squirt some of this in, you can see right away you get that dark brown color. And it starts to foam over. And people are like, OK, well, when's it going to get going? And then eventually you get a pretty violent reaction really quickly and a really dramatic cloud. And then the interesting thing is that if you look in the chemical splash tray, and you can see a little bit of it down here, there's still that yellow color from the iron chloride solution beforehand. Now, my students usually remark that this is a little bit lighter than it was before. So sometimes I'll take an equal volume of water, dilute it, add the same amount of the iron chloride that I did. So if I have 20 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, I'll use 20 milliliters of water, add the same amount of iron chloride beforehand. So they can see that it's really just a dilution of the iron chloride that's happening here. It's not actually being chemically changed to new substance at the end. The interesting thing about a catalyst, though, is that catalysts aren't used up as part of the reaction rate or the reaction process. So if a catalyst isn't consumed, it's put back at the end of the chemical reaction, I should be able to use this again. So if I pour some more hydrogen peroxide in here, we should see the exact same chemical reaction. And I'll pour just a little bit this time, because we just want to see the bubbling. But you can see, again, that dark brown reaction intermediates formed, the rapid evolution of oxygen gas. And so the reaction will foam, foam over again. And again, after the reaction's finished, we go back to that yellow color that we saw, that yellow-orange color that we saw for iron-3 chloride. And you can do this multiple times and show kids that a catalyst keeps being reused. So, well, this is handy if you're going to speed up a reaction for a commercial or an industrial process. You want something that's going to be reusable. You're going to consume less stuff. And so if you have a catalyst, you don't have to keep putting new stuff in there. And I tie this often into the catalytic converters that are in your automobiles. You have a honeycomb mesh of all of these metals that the hot exhaust gets fed through. Well, your catalytic converter is really pretty good for the life of your car. Eventually, it does get gummed up with some deposits, but you want something that can keep being reused and reused and reused. Recycling is an important thing. Now, another thing that's interesting, 
Lots of things can catalyze the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. One of them is ultraviolet light. So you'll notice that most manufacturers, when you buy it in the store, or if you buy it from Flynn, you'll see that they come in these very opaque, dark brown plastic bottles. This keeps the ultraviolet light from getting into the hydrogen peroxide. But the hydrogen peroxide, on its own accord, is going to naturally decompose into water and into oxygen gas. That's the reason Flynn sells these in the sort of accordion style so that they'll expand if the pressure ever increases. Uh, that will keep it from building up pressure and splashing hydrogen peroxide in your skin when you open the cap. But the other thing that they do is they often add phosphate ions to your hydrogen peroxide to stabilize it. Pro Phosphate ions will act as a inhibitor, something that prevents the decomposition from happening in this case. So the way you can show the role of an inhibitor, and if you teach a biology class, or you can also show this for your biology teacher if you want to, I'm going to pour some of this in, and I've got some sodium phosphate ready to go, and I'll add the inhibitor once I get the bubbling going. I'll add the inhibitor so students can see the role of what happens when an inhibitor is added to a reaction. This one requires a little bit of dexterity, so I'll add the peroxide in. You can start to see some of the bubbling. I'll wait till it gets going a little bit vigorously. And then if you put in the sodium phosphate, the bubbling still happens, but then it slows down and it's not happening at nearly the rate. And I can a little bit more inhibitor because I'm not sure how much of the uh, iron chloride is left in there. But if you add the inhibitor, it just slows down the rate of the reaction. So it doesn't compete the reaction from happening at all. It's still happening, but we're not getting nearly the violent explosion that we are getting from the catalyzed reaction. Now we have a much slower controlled reaction where it, so you can nicely show the demonstration of both catalysis and inhibition of a chemical reaction. It's a really nice one that I like for showing reaction intermediates, for showing the role of a catalyst, and for showing how inhibitors can slow down the rate of a chemical reaction. Thank you.